I'm sure many people when remembering Takashi Amano would think of his beautiful aquascapes or gorgeously crafted aquariums. But when I remember Mr. Amano, I'm often reminded of his photography and more specifically his coverage of the Rio Negro River Basin. This photo is very special to me. It's what I think about when I remember Mr. Amano and what inspired me to create nature-inspired aquascapes. I often stare at it and let my mind wander into the amazing underwater world of the Amazon. But I had this idea to create an aquascape, something to express how I feel about this photo. So I started creating. I sat down and began to draw out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I decided I wanted to bring you along with me on this journey as I create this very personal aquascape. This aquascape is a gift to myself, Mr. Romano, and to you. Welcome to Wabiscape. This aquascape is something I've wanted to do for a while. In many ways, it's a reminder of what got me passionate about this hobby. I love the simplicity captured in this photo of an otherwise chaotic looking habitat. The small school of tetra swimming in the gentle current. I love the way the wood curves up and meets the air above. The light shimmering across the leaves below. I want to capture this moment. I want to experience nature alive. Not only do I want this to replicate nature visually, but I also want it to replicate nature on an ecological level as well. So I'm going to implement the botanical method for this tank, which is using organic botanical materials like leaves, wood, and seed pods to create a habitat for a host of micro and macro organisms that are gonna break down organic waste in the aquarium. Essentially, I'm turning the tank into a filter. These organisms and biofilms are going to take the organic detritus and use it as fuel to process nutrients like nitrates. So to do this, we're going to have to create layers. Because this is a small enclosed habitat, we can't just fill it with a huge layer of sand. Or it potentially could have some issues with buildup of potentially harmful gases under the substrate. I'm really just going to go with a relatively thin layer of sand which is pretty much just cosmetic at this point because it's soon going to be covered up with layers of organic materials, but that's okay. On top of the sand, I'm going to be adding a layer of cocoa peat. This isn't completely necessary, but it'll definitely aid in a few things. Biofilms will accumulate on the organic materials that will host loads of beneficial bacteria. Through creating layers of organic materials, we will create vast amounts of surface area for them to thrive. We'll also begin to notice tons of different larger organisms like copepods, amphipods, detritus worms, and so much more. These will further break down the organic materials into detritus and provide a supplemental food source for the fish. In fact, you'll be able to see your fish foraging and picking at the small organisms and biofilms as they explore their habitat. Before adding anything else, I'm going to add my hardscape for this aquascape. I'm only going to be using this branch that I got from SR Aquaristic. It's not a sponsored item, but they were amazing and they helped me find the right piece of wood to capture the feeling of this photo. And I think it does just that. After filling the tank, you may experience some things still wanting to float up. To solve that issue, you can add stones until they sink or you can waterlog them beforehand. The next layer we're going to add is a ton of live oak leaves from Beta Botanicals. They're going to cover the entire surface of the bottom of the tank and cap off the cocoa peat. All of these layers combined are going to be the fuel for this tank. Normally you wouldn't want to just throw a ton of botanicals into a tank right away, especially an established one. But because this is a new tank, it's okay. And if you want to know how to add botanicals to an established tank, you can check out one of my videos on how to do just that. Now you may be curious on how to cycle a tank like this. You're going to want to wait a few weeks for the bacteria to bloom and the biofilms to develop. Once the tank gets more clear and the turbidity goes away, you can add fish to start the cycle. Watch for any issues, but normally it's business as usual. 
I'll have to make more in-depth videos on this process in the future. But essentially, the more everything matures, the more life you'll see. I may not have been able to replicate this photo perfectly. Nor did I want to. But I think I captured the emotion. The feeling of the moment captured by Mr. Amano. I really love how it came out. But I'll let you be the judge. If you're new to aquascaping or you've been doing it for a while, you've probably heard the name Takashi Amano at least once. Takashi Amano has inspired many into the world of aquascaping and is often esteemed as one of the founding fathers of the aquascaping hobby. And in a way, without Takashi Amano, we probably wouldn't have things like Iwagumi or Nature Aquarium or probably many of the wonderful things that come out of the ADA brand. This aquascape, in a way, is an homage to Mr. Amano, but it's also an homage to the things that made me fall in love with this hobby. I hope you consider starting a botanical tank. It really is a rewarding way to create an intentional home for your fish. Thank you for following along with me, and I appreciate you very much. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I do my best to answer them all. If you want to get started using botanicals, be sure to visit my friends over at Beta Botanicals. It's an amazing business and a truly great resource for quality products. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks again.